I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the only way he gets off, though. I, I think so, too, at yeah. this point. Because, like, the fact that he goes out of his way to get stung is the real problem. Yeah. No, it's, it's like, pretty bad. <laughs> I, on the one hand, I get why he does it, but on the other hand, the dude's a sadist. Oh, yeah. It'd only be worse if he was screaming at the cameraman, You have to look into my eyes! Watch! <laughs> Watch! Witness me! <laughs> you can't break eye contact. <laughs> oh, man. It looks pretty clean. It looks cleaner than I walked into my kitchen this morning. And uh, usually I'll go, oh, I could use some cleaning. But I just walked in and went, oh, man, it, it's not great. It is not. It is. I've got to do some cleaning. So that's what I'm going to do today. The cleaning. Um, Let's see if I can get a good angle on this mess. There's a mess over there. Oh, it, it's, it's, there. it's stuck in a couple corners is all. Yeah. Well, the problem is it's Christmas stuff. Yeah. So that's that's the real problem. It's just. Once Christmas happens, uh-huh. the mess will disappear, but... Huh? Merry Christmas. We say happy cryptid days around here, John. Happy cryptid days? Is cryptid days <laughs> our new special holiday that's going to make us billions? I have, um, I have some bad news. Well, it's, it's good for you, but bad news for me. And that What's is that? Um, you uh, made the mistake of trusting me with the password for stuff. And yep. through doing yep, that... I- I learned that the once indomitable, abominable Clay Sinclair, uh, mm-hmm. who I used to like, and mm-hmm. uh, said, hashtag Dinobot number one. And oh, yeah, he did. There's there's a reason <sighs> why opinions are not called facts, and that's because opinions can be wrong, and that's because Rhinoc is number one. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it Cheetor's there. is number one. We're going to... F- no, no, no. This yeah. is a fight to the death. Is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will I will die on this bridge. I will weaponize my cats. I... You'll weaponize your cats? My cats don't need to be we- Well, one of the cats doesn't need to be weaponized either. No. <laughs> He's already a weapon. He's a living weapon. He's literally pacing in front of the door right now. <laughs> literally. He's trying to break in. I can see him. I can see his, his nose. <laughs> he was summoned and he came. Oh, he's like Beetlejuice or Bloody Mary. It, yeah, pretty much. Jiro, Jiro, Jiro. Oh, he's behind you. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, quite frankly. <laughs> It'd be great that if cat. he's just hovering behind your head and what? Hello, John. In that voice? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if that would be great. Uh, it'd probably be pretty dope. I mean, it'd be funny, but it would also be nightmarish. There's that. Yeah. So. No, oh, that's true. He is a nightmare, so, you know, I've come to terms with that. Yeah, that's totally true. Welcome to Whatever Happened to Sushi at Wendy's, the audio documentation of the journey of a retired private investigator, or ADJPI, where I ponder what happened to Sushi at Wendy's, a proud part of the Sashimi Wolf Network. And I would like to note, I noticed... This morning that we already did a pizza at McDonald's uh, spoof. I was I was wondering about that. I saw it. I saw it on the list, and I'm like, Nah, no, nah, I'm not gonna touch this. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Brandon. Uh, I, I'm gonna let Brandon <laughs> live in his grave I, that he's buried for, for himself. I didn't I didn't consult the spreadsheet till this morning, and then <laughs> I was uh, lazy. That, that's that, really that's where i got lazy to be fair about mm, approximately 100 percent of all the joke episode titles that i've made yeah i made up on the spot so <laughs> i usually open I got my podcatcher and uh you know scroll through till i see something and go oh, i can make i can make something out of that uh, i i kid you not there have been episodes where um 
I open up uh, Podcast Addict and then yeah. just go, Generation Y. All right, let's make a joke <laughs> about Generation Y. Uh, um, Adam ruins everything. Yeah, let's do that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Brandon Boyer. I'm John Dunham. <clears throat> I'm excited. Though. You know what tomorrow is, right? Uh, tomorrow when we're releasing the podcast or tomorrow when, at the time of recording? It was a trip. I was going to say yeah. you're wrong. It's Tuesday. Uh, I see you're on your toes already this morning. Yeah. Well, well, I was thinking about that. And yeah. I was just thinking about that. Uh, there's nothing else to it. But <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't. So you can think about something without ever having a conclusion for something. That's true. That's definitely true, because that's definitely the case for some of the things that I've researched for this podcast. <laughs> what was the end game of last week's cryptid? I seriously still don't know. I'm still flummoxed as to what the end game of that one dude who had the cryptid in like a cave was. Yeah. And then the other dude who had the cryptid had the who sent freaking film strips of Mickey Mouse. <laughs> yeah. Was that like, the one, by the way, the, the the Canadian one that you mentioned at the at the top of that episode? Was that the one? At one point in time, you sent me a text saying that you found someone who you think has an attraction towards a uh, cryptid, and then I saw that picture and I never asked you. Is that the one where they were attracted? No, to? no, that's still not the one. I still because the one that, that the one that I'm thinking of. Yeah, I want to do a lot more research on because it's actually kind of an interesting one, and it's it's. It's something that I know a decent amount about, but not okay. enough that I'm willing to do an episode about it uh -huh. yet. Um, I still haven't gotten to that one, mainly because I don't want to read the book that I found on it <laughs> yet. I'm still a little nervous. I bought the book, and after I bought the book, I looked at the guy's other stuff, Yeah, and then that's when I found out that I think he has, a, he has an attraction to the cryptid. Oh, yeah, he has a few. Uh, he's not a politician. He's not the person I'm thinking of, is he? He's not that one. Okay. I know which one you're thinking of. He's not that guy. Gotcha. That's good. Yeah. Ostensibly, this person has a master's degree. Oh. Because of their position, and you need a master's degree to hold that position. But gotcha. that's all the fact. That, those are all the hints I'm going to give out. Okay. On this particular no, I promise. Listen, you don't have to tell me to not do research twice. That's. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, I was drinking some tea while you said that too, so that was a that was a risky. Yeah, that was a bold move on your part. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, so today's creature has possible roots as far back as 200 BCE. It is a small humanoid creature in appearance. It roams the jungles of Brazil and is still seen today. Do you have any guesses on what this little fella may be? I know. Okay. So when you said small humanoid, the first thing that popped in my head was a, uh, a puck wudgie. It's but not I a know that that's, I know that that's uh, North American. Yeah. I'm going to guess that it's probably a close cousin to the puck wudgie. Cause I've never, I don't know the exact one from Brazil. Um, the only other thing I can think of is the Menehune, but that's that's uh, Hawaii. So okay, yeah. The, uh, I'm just doing a brief cursory Google of Pukwudgie to see, uh, uh, but then something or other left alone, according to lore, is something uh, you know, not they're far off. They're, it's they're yeah, not far off. They're basically ugly hedgehog uh, fairies, gremlins. Yeah, that, that's what a Pukwudgie is. It's a it's an ugly hedgehog gremlin. Gotcha. So, let's see. Get shareable link. This is the part that I always edit out. <laughs> Copy link. Chow Beaster. Okay, yeah, there would have been no way I would have known what that is. Okay, well, that's what I, I, I'm calling it. But uh, yeah. don't Google up what that means, because that will... Uh, ruin it? Yeah, that, that, that'll ruin it. Just don't, because those are... I, I, I gave it a Portuguese name. So, yeah, today's <laughs> creature is... Tata Duende. I don't know why, but that made me laugh really hard. <laughs> what, Tata Duende? Tata Duende. Yeah. I don't know. That's just, uh, oh, 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 there's a, um, 
Uh, they might be giant song. Is there? Uh, it's not quite that. Three might be Duende. That's the name of the episode. It's from Join Us. Okay. Don't... Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> but it's they might be giant. So like everything that they've ever produced is weird. Yeah, I'll I'll have to um, give that one a listen later. Let's see. The monochrome mon- martinet. His texture is a start is starched, and the song is a march. Uh, and from the beginning, his Duende was winning. But though he's worthy of it, uh, he, though he's a worthy MC, he'll never be part of the three. Orpheum Act, Faustian Pact, three might be Duende. In fact, yeah, um, I have. Okay. W- I, I don't have, know what that means. Yeah. It sounds like there's a battle of sorts. I have no idea what it's supposed to be about. Uh, it's a character song. A duende is a mythological creature that lends its name to a Spanish concept of emotion and art. Uh, okay. okay, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. That doesn't clear up their lyrics. <laughs> Come on. I, I don't know. Come on, giants. Yeah. Uh, they're... They're alternative. Like, what, what can you expect? They're, yeah, they're an alternative true. band that sings children's music as well. Yes. I mean, look, at, coffee, look yes. at Birdhouse in Your Soul. Yeah, I just got a birdhouse. Or a bird feeder, really, not a birdhouse. Is I, it in your soul, though? No, it's on the tree in my front yard. It's so the cats okay. can watch it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, I don't have to worry about that because we have so many birds because we have, like, a full, like we, we have that cliff behind my house that has a bunch of trees on it. Yeah. So the okay. cats just stare there. Yeah. Oh, uh, I thought they got they get lonely when I'm at, when I'm at work. So I got a, a birdhouse and hung it in front of the front window, so they Fair can uh, watch it. And they now they they love it. They sit in the front window and they mark, make this weird clicking noise at everything. Ah, <laughs> uh, the true cat, the true cat play. Yeah. The Tata Duende is a roughly four foot tall humanoid creature that roams the jungle. Its name translates to grandfather dwarf. And it's distinguished by its backward feet, lack of thumbs, and a red hat. It's not a red cap, is it? It's not a red cap. No, this is one that I wanted to do for for one of the earlier episodes, really. But I had a hard time scrounging up uh, enough information to get a full episode out of it. But it's uh, mm-hmm. the it's a backwards feet monster, which is one that, that is... Yeah, they're interesting. I like them. I saw it on TV once and thought, you know. That'd be cool. Most most backwards feet monsters, though, can be explained by someone either A, walking backwards, or B, wearing shoes that have feet backwards on them. Yeah, those are painful, though. Hurt your toes. They do. Yeah. Furthermore, Tata Duende may carry a machete and a large stick and wear animal skins. So are we going to go into space on this episode? No, I won't lie. I did, when I wrote that line spend maybe 10 minutes just looking at youtube videos of danny trejo saying machete i don't blame you that's i could not do it it was great i i don't blame you yeah man that one that we saw in theaters together that, machete like, kills with lady gaga and she had the uh yeah and she like pulled yeah. off her face and uh, that movie yes it was it was amazing yeah but man did it lose the plot <laughs> man if there was one to begin with but yeah it, it was like it was like okay this movie is you know it's a fun action flick and then all uh-huh. of a sudden the plot like takes a sharp left turn and it's like i don't even know what's happening <laughs> <laughs> it got crazy yeah yeah The backwards feet I find particularly interesting. This would mean that should someone be following tracks, the creature would actually be behind the tracker, making them an easy target. This is also the first time in which we have this specific type of feature on any type of cryptid that we're discussing. Fair enough. Um, In the context of uh, the description of the, the cryptid. Well, the, the backwards feet. So we haven't had yeah. any backwards feet creatures. We have lots of, like, glowing red eyes and, and uh, humanoid. Yeah. But we don't have any, like, reverse features, sort of. It, it kind of plays off the notion of the other, because it's like yeah. Uncanny Valley, where it's just slightly it's just slightly different enough, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so yeah. It, 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 it unnerves you more than, say, other things, so to speak. Yeah, oh, totally. It is noted that most frequent sightings of Tata Duende are at night and post-rain. Perhaps uh, this is because the prints may be more defined when made into the soft ground. Uh, or it's a worm. 
or it's a, a, a human worm. You just made a, a disgusting, worm. disgusting, disgusting creature. Oh, well, that's man. what that's what the hunters are in uh, in Halo. You know, that's true. Yeah, they're worms. They're yeah. worms. They're worms in like exoscoot suits. Exoscoot suits. Exosuits. <laughs> so I mean, like, it's totally possible. You uh-huh. know, maybe maybe the covenants are already on Earth. It's it's entirely possible. Mm-hmm. It is also said that Tata Duende appears around Lent and Good Friday. Okay, so this is a more modern creature then. I'm assuming not from. Well, wait, wait. No, you said 200 BC. It has very old roots, but some of the lore may have changed um, after uh, you know people moved. Christendom. Certain, yeah, after after Christians moved into the area, because uh-huh. that happens. Yeah, I mean that's what happened with Saturnella. So yeah, fair. It is said you may know when this little grandfather is around because his presence is accompanied with a whistle, so like whistling through like, the woods, like Proto Man. God damn, John. Because <laughs> that's when that's when that's how you know Proto Man's coming. Is wait, he has a red hat too. He's Proto Man. Does he have a cape? No, no cape. Uh, then he's not Proto Man. Oh. Proto Man needs that cape to survive. Uh huh. Well, not cape, but scarf. Mm-hmm. It's a key feature. <laughs> that and the whistle. Yeah, the whistle. Yeah. If the whistle sounds close, have no fear. Uh, but if it is near, he is closer than you think. Sorry, if it's... Reverse it. If it's far away, then he's close to you. And if it's close to you, then he's far away. Because he's a trickster. Mm, like Carnival Wilson. Like Carnival Wilson. Uh, yeah. That's a joke that only people who listen to uh, Hello from the Magic Tavern will get. <laughs> Continuing to reduce our pool of potential listeners. Again, the more narrow the scope the better the podcast. That's what I would say. We want to have as few listeners as possible, which means they will all get the in-jokes. Goddamn. Yeah. All right. So, so all right. Yeah, he's a trickster. I got Yeah, it. he's a trickster. Is He's rumored to braid the tails of horses when you're not looking, hide your car keys, and be the cause of any number of odd things you may encounter throughout the day. Ta-ta. Can I just say, yeah, braiding the hair of your horses, that sounds like very convenient because that's a thing that people do. Yeah. Right? So it's like, it seems convenient. Like, oh, thank you, Tata. I was going to braid my horse's hair today, but now you've saved me time. Yeah, right? Right? So, I I don't know. That seems useful to me. Yeah. Tata is rumored to be the guardian of the force. He protects animals from hunters who may overhunt, and he also helps those who are lost or injured. But if you find yourself on his bad side, hide your thumbs as he is rumored to bite them off when he attacks. What? He doesn't have any thumbs, so I guess that's what he goes for when he attacks a human. He can't just attach them, though. Da, da, that's not I how it know. works. Maybe he's got some weird uh, thumb attaching powers, and then he's uh, human. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, which is this is also pretty gruesome, right? Imagine like getting into an argument with someone, then they just start going for your thumb. That's weird because usually yeah. you don't go for the hands. No, usually no. you don't. It, it adds a weird factor. You say. And he's going after your thumbs. What is he, early Kyler? Who's early Kyler? Should uh, I know I this? Squidbillies. Squidbillies. Oh, it's been a hot minute, man, since I uh, watched Adult Swim. Uh, I love Squidbillies. It there's, was so good. There, there's something. It's still on the air, by the way. Is it? Um, like yes. new seasons, not just reruns? Yeah, but it's like that weird thing that Adult Swim does where they release a whole season at once and then they... Like don't advertise it at all. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, it's it's one of those things. But oh man, the the humor in that show it's like it's so childish. Yeah. But at the same time, it's so like incredibly intelligent. <laughs> like in the way that that's true. Actually, it, yeah. it's one of those like it, it, it's there's a lot of actual like really intelligent jokes that they make but oh, it's yeah. all couched in like this childishness yeah so if you if you actually are paying attention it's like did they just make a joke about like the iran contra affair yeah <laughs> sure, i was gonna say i missed the show but then you just said it's still on the air i have to check that out i it's, i regular, uh... whenever they release seasons on amazon i buy new episodes. Yeah. i buy it on digital oh right I'm, on i'm a monster shoot the garifuna tribe have their own name for him 
Duendu. He is said to also be the guardian of treasure, and should one wish to meet with him, perhaps to divine the location of hidden treasure, uh, carve a message into pine. And if he decides to meet you, it will likely happen at noon. To appease him, bring a rooster, a white sheet, rum or cigars, and promise him your firstborn. Hmm. Yep. Okay. That's a lot, but whatever. Hey, man, got to get that treasure. All right. Yeah. Um, as soon as you see him, hide your thumbs, and if he likes you, you may have the opportunity to learn from him any musical instrument you wish, including his silver guitar. So that probably sounds terrible, right? Oh, uh, yeah, probably. They probably sound like, pretty bad. Like the acoustics, like I'm assuming it's not an, an electric guitar. No. In which case the material doesn't, it matters, but it doesn't matter as much as an acoustic. Yeah. Like an acoustic guitar, if, if you're, if you have a guitar. I mean, they, they make all, uh, they call them resonators. Uh, they're, they're metal guitars. You know, they, oh, they? They, they use them in blues a lot. Uh, I don't find well, them particularly great sounding, um, but they, they, it's a thing. I don't know well, if he I mean, has a resonator. They make all metal fa- ones, and they make partially metal ones. To be fair, blues goes for a different sound anyways. They yeah. kind of – blues kind of deliberately goes for a semi-discordant sound just because yeah. it, it enhances it. Oh, yeah, I know. I've, I've seen resonators before. Okay. Yeah. yeah uh, it was in a movie. Was, I, I'm about to say, it was in a movie, yes – it has been in many, many blues movies. Yeah, yeah, all all the blues movies. Yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. No, oh, it is also yep. said that if you anger him, he may immobilize you or even cut off your head. So he'll he'll go a little bit farther than thumb play. Destination Truth did an episode on Tata Duende. Uh, the very first thing they say is that he is two foot tall, covered with hair, and show an animation of a werewolf with bad ears. However, they did make its feet backwards and remove the thumbs. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Destination Truth is not a very good show if you want to know anything about anything historical. No, that's what this whole next part is about, is just shitting on Destination Truth. That's fair. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which I did like. I, did, I will say I like that. Like, it was fun to watch. But not, like, after doing all the research and then watching it, and then you go, well, this is just all wrong. But it, it was still it's, fun to watch. It's good re- – it's it's a good entertainment, I'll say. Yeah, yeah. That's the key. It's entertainment. Uh-huh. The, uh, the group travel to Belize, located in Central America, and home of the Maya starting around 1500 BCE. Mm-hmm. Uh, home to over 380 million people and has a rich culture. Here they start with several hot puns, which I enjoyed severely. Ryder, can you believe we're here? I know, it's unbelievable. No, we are not doing Oh, that. yes, we are. You better believe it. Ryder, can you call ahead and get a ride for us in the town? Absolutely. It should be here any minute. Oh, my God. Really? Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. It's not the worst vehicle we've ever had. No! At least we know it runs. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> I hate that. I actually hate that. Yeah, yeah. That's a terrible pun. Yeah. Like, that's not even trying, and it's slightly ethnophobic. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Their first stop, oh. it's pretty it's pretty great. Their first stop is at a zoo where they visit spider monkeys. The idea is that since they are similar in size to the Tata one day and also only have four fingers, that they may be a misidentified animal. They promptly dismiss this and go to speak to a farmer who claims to have seen the creature. Wait, why did they promptly dismiss it? That actually might be that's actually semi reasonable. And so they, if, if using their using their description of the creature, I'm looking at the image that you have in the in the Google Doc. Yeah, and using the description and the the thing that they created to represent the Tata Duende, it kind of looks like a spider monkey. So I don't know why they're instantly mis like if that's their if that's what they think it looks like, it's unreasonable to outright dismiss that as a possibility. Yeah. 
Well, they they dismiss it because somehow the creature is um, in the state where everyone would recognize that is a, it is a spider monkey and is too rare to have been seen so many times. So the <laughs> they're having their cake and eating it too, man. They really are. All right. Yeah. Yep. Sure. Yeah. He describes hearing rocks move, and upon the hill behind him was Tata Duende. The creature whistled so loudly that it scared his horses. Fortunately, the farmer also claimed to have a skull, and he agreed to let the team take pictures of the skull so they could have it analyzed. What? Like He found a weird skull in the woods. So, all right, I'm going to just say something, though. Yes. Because I have never heard of the Tata Duende. Yes. And this would be a huge deal if this was a thing. Uh huh. This is this applies to all ghost shows, all monster shows, basically all paranormal shows in existence. Uh huh. If they had a smoking gun that was actually a smoking gun, yeah, I would have heard about it. Yeah. Because it would have instantly been, oh hey, there's a huge thing, right? Yeah. Like oh hey, I discovered the existence of a ghost. Oh hey. We discover the existence of a Loch Ness monster. That would be a thing. Yeah. It wouldn't be just a, oh, it's revealed on this TV special that aired at 9 p.m. on a Sunday. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like, <laughs> they then, there, they then depart to meet with members of the Garifuna tribe. Jump cut to a shopping montage at a farmer's market. One guy buys a wig. Then Why? Cut- Cut to an airboat montage, then a kayak scene, and then why? they arrive to the Garifuna village with offerings of plantains. I don't know why, John. Why? And because they probably had to fill an additional two minutes. That's why. <laughs> what they don't show is the the road leading directly to the Garifuna village, which has several buses. <laughs> that <laughs> it strongly felt like that. Well, here's the problem: they're on a road, and then they get into a boat. Like, they, they, it doesn't feel like there was any reason that they would have had to get into a boat to begin with other than it was in the budget and they needed to fill the time. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it is possible that – I'm I'm obviously making a joke. It is possible that the village might only be accessible by kayak. But it's I think possible. it's funnier to imagine that just off-frame there's, like, a bustling highway. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're at a renaissance fair. Yeah. Right? And there's just the, the, the high walls that surround it to kind of break, like, <laughs> immerse you, like, like, the illusion of yeah. being in the, the Elizabethan England or whatever. Uh-huh. But, yeah. Anywho. Yeah. The Garifuna then point them towards a cave where they believe the Duende frequents. They set up night vision cameras, perimeter sensors, and then fan out in search of the creature. Insert some of what sounds uh, like monkey calls and a very shaky night vision footage and a thermal cam Im- image of uh, literally nothing. They showed images of just trees. Yeah, I'm looking at the thermal cam image. It's um, it's somehow worse than the uh, Grafton monster. Somehow, yeah. Somehow worse. Yeah. I mean, if it was blue and pink, it could be a vaporwave video. I mean, that might be cool. Yeah. Get Dan Bell on it. Uh Uh-huh. Enter stage right. What one man calls the biggest cave he has ever seen ever. It appears to be about the size of the caves in Rosendale. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which exactly five of our listeners will understand. Yeah, <laughs> got it. Yep. Narrower and narrower. Uh, basically, the cave in Rosendale is base. It's for what I'd call a uh, mushroom farm. Yeah, there, there is uh, maybe even smaller than that because it, it, it's uh, well, there's parties well, it's in there now. It's literally a mushroom farm. Oh, is it a literal mushroom farm? Yeah, they they do they they farm mushrooms there at certain points in the year, and then they okay. open it up for like acoustics for singing yeah. and stuff like that yeah. and recording. It's not a small cave, but it's also not like I a massive call it cave. The biggest cave I've ever seen. I mean, like, I've been to How Caverns. I was gonna say How Caverns is bigger. Yeah, yeah, I've been to How Caverns because like, I've been I, in the I, Rosendale yeah. caves, and they're you know they're cool, but I wouldn't call them big. I mean, someone could live there. Well, yeah, there's like a little room with like a, with like chairs and stuff. Yeah, someone could live there easily. I mean, it floods, so I, I wouldn't <laughs> live there, but someone could live there. Uh, then. 
they all jump into the water, and the first thing they say once the team is in the water is... Let's go, boys! Okay, guys. Look for any dry areas. Any spots where this thing might be living up on the banks. What? Wait. <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's pretty good. It is. It is pretty good. Also, if you know anything about caves, don't go in cave water if you can avoid it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I... just don't. As a rule. Oh, snakes! There's nothing wrong with some stagnant water. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, not like <sighs> it's not as though almost half of human history has been trying to thick stagnant water and yeah. being able to use it for drinking and yeah. bathing and cleaning uh, and a little ringworm never hurt anybody yeah <laughs> just, if we can only hope we can only hope yeah then after a few seconds a very fake there's something in the water and then they leave literally to california oh so is this one of those jump cuts and then they come back and like oh yeah it was nothing or do they never address it they, Which they, is it? They, they never address it. So they, they, they're like, there's something in the water. And then they flee the cave, and then they're in California. Cool. Yep. Cool, cool, cool. Yep. They analyze the sounds and say that they were from howler monkeys. So uh, I do appreciate that they didn't say, you know, it's an unknown anything. They outright say it was howler monkeys. So they're they're honest in that regard. Then they show the skull photos. To Dr. Jim Dines of the Los Angeles Natural History Museum, who says the skull is damaged beyond identification, which is why it looks so weird. And he also says, and I quote, I can tell you what it's not, and that would be the Tata Duende. And then the episode ends. <laughs> I also appreciate them leaving that in the episode. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, what they did cut out, though, was Dr. Jim Dines literally laughing in their face yeah. <laughs> for a solid hour yeah yeah the tata duende has appeared on postage stamps and at this point in time it would seem to me that the tata duende is more of a boogeyman created to keep children from wandering too far into the woods and while there are some who do legitimately believe in him most sources also state that he is folklore made to scare children and that's all i have on the tata duende but he is not the only Brazilian jungle man with backwards feet. Oh no, John. This, this thumbless jungle grandpa also apparently has to share the woods with backwards feet boy. That's nightmarish. Yeah. This image, this picture. <laughs> this is the... Okay, so basically, remember uh, back in the early 2000s when there was all that imported Canadian television? Or mid to late 2000s, rather, yeah. where all that Canadian television showed up on uh, Cartoon Network. Uh-huh. It's basically in that style, but yeah. somehow looks worse. It's pretty horrifying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'm a little... I'm I'm more scared of this creature than I was the Tata Duende. Yeah. And the Tata Duende will bite my thumbs off. Yes. The Kurapira also roams the same land. First documented... By Jose de Achita, sorry about the pronunciation, in 1560, its name translates to covered in blisters. Often depicted as a young boy with flame red hair and backwards feet, the Kurupira also has magical powers. I feel like this, uh, this if, it's, if it translates to covered in blisters, I feel like uh, this image with the broken leg on this creature <laughs> yeah. uh, doesn't really... Uh, do justice to the name. No, I f did not find any image of him covered in blisters, uh, mm, by the interesting. way. Um, and this was just the cleanest image. There were others, but, you know, whatever. Uh, it can create illusions to cause you to get lost and auditory hallucinations, much like the Tata Duende, to make a whistling sound. The intent, however, is apparently to drive the victim mad. Okay. Yes. So I'm reading this, and I'm starting to realize what's happening. Yeah. 
are the Tata Duende and the uh, Kudapira hunters getting lost in the forest and then trying to explain why they got lost in the forest? It is entirely possible right there, John. Cause it is very it, possible. Reading this right now is making me think uh, this whole story is literally just some macho man's excuse for being like, no, I could never get lost in the forest. I'm too smart for that. It was um, <laughs> it was the Tata Duende. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he misled me. Yeah, that, that's what happened. I barely made it out in my own life. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> and like the Tata Duende, uh, the Kurupira aims to protect the force from hunters, and you may also appease him by bringing offerings of rum and cigars. One may wish to do this if they do not want to become possessed by the spirit, and apparently they also live in trees. I can't read Portuguese, so that's all I have on the Kurupira, uh, but that is not the only creature in the area that shares a common theme. Can you see what that theme is yet? Yeah, I think I've, I think I've figured the theme out. Yeah? Because cause the backwards feet, literally, they're going in circles. Yeah. <laughs> that's literally what's happening. Uh-huh. They're 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 lost in the forest and they're finding their own footprints. <laughs> and the reason that it happens near soft like recent rainfalls when there's like you know soft loamy soil and all that stuff uh-huh. is because that's when their footprints will actually show up. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this. Oh man. Oh. Oh. Uh, I think we're receiving an internal communication. It I think it's about our bonuses. That's a lie. Bonuses aren't real. You know it. The last time we got a bonus, we were picked up by some uh prehistoric creature. And dropped on a mountaintop, and we had to walk back down. The, I mean, the, the, you can't complain about the view. The claws were very gentle. It, it, and it was a smooth ride, so I can't... It, I sort of enjoyed it. I mean, it Gary it died! Nice. I mean, that's a price to pay, I suppose. I mean, Gary, we have good... There, there's great health insurance. Not great enough for a punctured lung. No, but I, Gary's family was feet. set for life. Like, it's pretty good. I mean, they even released his children from the cages so they could go back with the mother. And that, I mean, what more could you ask for? They didn't know, they didn't adapt well to life on the outside. You know it. I know it. We saw what happened to that mother. They, I mean... <laughs> yeah... <laughs> Like, modern medicine's gotten a lot better. They didn't have to sew on a mannequin face over her face to fix it. <laughs> Legend says that there once was a reliable source. An original account not tainted by logical fallacy or bias of any sort. That's why today's episode is brought to you by Critical Thinking. Amaze your friends, defeat your foes with this amazing tool. You may even find solace in identifying reliable information regarding that which is tainted. Now back to the show. Ugh, I thought about bringing back some popcorn from the break room, but uh, Did then you? I realized you're recording podcast. What? What? Were you listening to All Star? Uh, no. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I know that I know those I know those tunes anywhere from uh, Mystery Men. Do you? <laughs> Which was the original source of that song? Not ah. Shrek. Okay. Have wait? Have you ever seen Mystery Men? Because I feel like we've talked about this before, and you didn't recognize the fact that the 
you saw the music video and you're like, man, there's a lot of big name stars. I'm like, yeah, that's Mystery Men. Yeah, I've never seen Mystery Men. The intro does have a lot of. Uh, it's got Dane Cook. It's got Dane Cook. It's got like Ben Stiller. It's got a bunch of people. And I was well, like, Ben Stiller is one of the main characters. Ben Stiller is one of the main characters. Yeah. Um, who was in that movie? I'm trying to remember now. There was a guy who can turn invisible, but only when everyone's uh, uh, not looking at him. <laughs> Uh, let's see. It's got Hank and Zaria. Oh, okay. Paul Rubens, Ben yep. Stiller, Greg Kinnear, uh, Eddie Izzard. Lots of, Eddie Izzard. Mm-hmm. They had a lot of people. William H. Macy. He was the digging guy. Uh, Kel Mitchell. Oh, yeah! Yeah, 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 yeah! Kel was, uh, Kel was the guy who could turn invisible. Yeah, CeeLo right. Green. Uh, CeeLo Green. Yeah, I think yep. CeeLo Green was like a, uh, was like a, what's the word I'm looking for? Cameo appearance. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Shoot. It's a very good movie. Oh, well, hey, Doug Jones. Doug Jones? Doug Jones. Doug Jones. He played Pencilhead. Oh, yeah, that's a, he had a, he had a sidekick that was like his son. Yeah. Dana Gould? Yeah. Dana Gould. Yeah, he was in it. Um, Paul Rubens was in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people on that film. Yeah, I uh, I I enjoy it. Yeah, it's it was a uh, uh, box office failure to say the least. <laughs> I'm looking at the numbers right now. It took in three thirty three point five million. At what cost? Its budget was sixty eight million. Ah, well, it's a little negative fifty percent between friends. It only has a 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, which I honestly, it's one of those things that if you enjoy it, you enjoy it. If you don't, you probably hate it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's almost definitely one of those, like, <laughs> it's very campy. Uh, if you like Ben Stiller as I do, it's mm-hmm. going to be good. I legitimately like almost every movie I see Ben Stiller in. Um, Ben Stiller is like the, uh, 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 what's his name? The Bees. The Bees? Oh, and Cage? Yeah, Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Nicolas Cage and Ben Stiller kind of occupy the same role for me. Like, I think that's unfair I- to Ben Stiller. I mean, Ben Stiller's like the cilantro of actors where you, people either like him or don't. And then Nick Cage is sort of like the, uh, he, he's sort of like the mayonnaise or like the iceberg lettuce of actors. He's the iceberg lettuce of actors. <laughs> he goes well and he goes with everything, but. No, I, I think that's not fair to Nick Cage, though. He's funny. At his best, he's amazing. I mean, I haven't seen that new movie that he was in, and that seems Mandy? pretty good. Yeah, I haven't seen Mandy, and that, that looked actually good. There's a cheese goblin in that, by the way. Yeah. I mean, Nick Cage feels like he just needs... He, he does a lot of stuff where it feels like he, he was did poorly... Uh, spent his money unwisely and needs to do uh, stuff. I think he also got drunk and then thought he was at his house and other people were in it and it was really someone else's house (laughs) Uh, i don't know if it's so much he makes bad money decisions i think it's more if he just literally can't say no it's entirely possible like 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 kick ass right like yeah i like them in kick ass actually you're batman okay but you're not you have no money all right you have a daughter okay all right i want a very elaborate i want a very precisely shot scene where i'm applying black eyeliner before i put my mask on (laughs) i'm doing it yeah okay oh man so anyways we're we're, there was another uh another cryptid yes our next looks like the rag man yeah our uh, next wearing a poncho yeah eating a baby Mm mm-hmm yeah, our next small Brazil, Bra- Brazilian, our next small Brazilian? Brazilian jungle man is the Pombero. The it's pom- one letter off from sombero, sombrero. <laughs> Pombero with the well, sombrero. Well, it's not one letter. I yeah. there's an extra er in there that I'm yeah. what's missing. But <laughs> a pombrero. <laughs> a pombrero. <laughs> it's a type of dog. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. They're shaped like hats. Yeah. The, uh, the the pombero is a small, hairy humanoid said to live in the jungles or abandoned houses. 
Uh, he is primarily nocturnal, which accounts for his Spanish name, Señor de la Noche, or Man of the Night. <laughs> That's a very literal translation, too. It is. It, well, they're, they're all pretty literal. Yeah. Pombero is said to in, imitate the sounds of birds. So we've got another mm. whistling meanie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He is said to be a protector of birds and will hunt children looking to harm them with slingshots. Mm-hmm. He is also a trickster who will free your cattle, steal your honey, and scare your horses in order to dismount the riders. He is also uh, may turn invisible and move silently and fit through small spaces. Okay, so I'm going to explain these three weird trickster things. Yeah. Free your cattle, the person who is driving the cattle, stop paying attention. Yeah. Steal your honey, uh, the person ate honey that they weren't supposed to eat, and scare your horses in order to dismount the rider. You're just bad at ri- riding horses. They're, they're literally creatures that are excuses for like getting lost and like losing stuff literally yeah like there's <laughs> everything on there is an excuse yeah oh yeah uh he however may be more devious uh as is said he that it is said that he will force single women to kiss him and he is blamed for unplanned pregnancies and ugly children ugly children yeah he's blamed for ugly children <laughs> Sorry, little Timmy. Um, you're ugly because of the pombrero. Yeah. The pombero. <laughs> he visited what? you at night and beat you with an ugly stick, Timmy. <laughs> oh, jeez. I guess that explains mask. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, and if you wish to uh, keep him from wreaking havoc, it is said that gifts of rum and cigars may appease him. Why is it rum and cigars? I think that it's really a story of... Um, you won't get lost if you don't take rum hunting. Right? So if you if you donate your rum to these creatures before you go out on a hunt, maybe they won't mislead you. Uh... <laughs> okay, continue. Our next creature Ooh. is the Kaipora. Did you scroll down? Because I saw Ooh. that face. <laughs> it's the Kaipora. Okay. His name literally translates to inhabitant of the forest. It is described as a small Native American with black hair, smoking a cigar, and riding a pig. It is said that they feared the light and roamed the forest, wielding a torch. Among uh, some of the regional regionalisms, it may be a cannibal. It is said to protect the forest from hunters by scaring away prey and hiding predators in the area. It I may just al- want to... I yeah. want to point out. Yes. If it's a cannibal, mm-hmm. that means it's eating other Kaipora. Oh, if it's a man eater, yeah. it is not a cannibal because it is not a human. I think the intent was that it ate human. Yes. I just, I just that's a weird like that's a weird nitpicky thing that bugs me. Yeah. Is it's not a cannibal if it's not also a human when it eats humans. Yeah. yeah. That's all. Uh it may Uh, Make auditory hallucinations or create fake tracks. It is said to be more active on religious days and their, um, oh, and their hunting for should, oh, uh, it's therefore, therefore, not therefore. And therefore, hunting should not take place. Thank you, John. (laughs) Got you. However, if you wish to distract them, an offering, wait for it of cigars and rum may be made. And there's also a delightfully racist show about it. It's, uh, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know if it's delightful. That That's going to haunt. That's going to be a nightmare. It's that's worse a than, nightmare that, uh, than that Mystery Science uh, Theater 3000. Uh, oh. Right? Right? I should have included a picture of that, god. too. Oh, God. Oh, God. What was the name of that movie? Oh, you uh. got to look it up. So for the listeners, as he looks that up, the screenshot of the uh, show is of a person dressed as a Native American, but in, like, um, if you imagine, like, neon red face. Uh, it's pretty terrible. But the first season of Mystery Science Theater 3000 The has... Revival. What's it called? 
Well, the revival of Mystery Science Series. Oh, yeah. Sorry. The, the first season. season. 11. Gotcha. The one where Jonah Cry Wilderness. Cry, Cry Wilderness. Cry Wilderness. Oh, man. Yes. On Netflix, season one of the revival. If you watch that, um, there is a gentleman who is supposed to play Native American. And uh, they painted his face. And behind his ears, they missed some. And you could also see on the animals that he can talk to, uh, shot callers. And um, I think your name's in the credits of one of those, too. Uh, my name's in the credits of uh, The Land That Time Forgot, which is the best one that my name could have been in, next to uh, Cry Wilderness. And I am currently adding this image. Oh, God. Right below. Ba-boom! It's the perfect picture, because you can clear... Oh, yeah, if you're a, uh, a Patreon supporter oh, of God. Hodag or higher, yeah. uh, I have gone out of my way to post the image of uh, the red face from Cry Wilderness. It's not delightful. It's awful. It's bad. It should never be a thing in yeah. the history of anything. Yeah, I will say it is less bad than <laughs> one of the... TV show. At least they're trying to... There's an attempt of being subtle. That's true, but I don't know if the one on the TV show is even intending to be red Face so much as it's like... Well, he's At the very of... least, at the very least, the one on the TV show is of a mythical creature. Yeah. The one on Cry Wilderness is of a normal human being who happens to be Native American. And yeah. they're trying to make it look like a white actor is Native American. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, in my opinion, way worse. <laughs> it is. It is. They did miss the fingers on the TV show. These still got normal guy fingers. That might be on purpose, though. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. So that concludes our cryptid section. But I would like to say we have an official Bigfoot watch. Okay. There is a news article that came out, and it says, Washington man shot after being mistaken for Bigfoot. I have included the article. <sighs> was it... Was it... <laughs> was it Ben Kissel? Is Ben Kissel all right? Do we know where Ben Kissel is? Has anyone checked his Instagram? I... What? Let me check. <laughs> Keep going. I need to make sure he's okay. Oh, Ben. <laughs> uh, I think I saw him post a story earlier today. Oh, thank God. Yeah, he did. Okay. Ooh, All right, we're safe. All right, all right, we're fine. Ben Kissel has not been shot. Being <laughs> big a man out target shooting on public lands near Helena, Washington, was shot by another man who, quote, mistook him for Bigfoot, reported the Helena Independent Record on December 17th. The incident occurred the previous Sunday, but the man waited until Monday to report it because he, quote, did not think it was necessary. The twenty. Wait, 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 wait. Which man? The the sh the shooty. Okay, okay. The guy that got shot didn't report it till the next day. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool. Yeah. The twenty-seven-year-old man reported to dispatchers that he was setting up targets on land controlled by the Bureau of Land Management in Northern Hills when a bullet struck roughly three feet to his left, followed by another to his right, and then he heard even more shots fired as he ran for cover. What? He reportedly confronted the shooter, who told him he was, quote, out hunting Bigfoot, and that he should have been wearing orange, according to Lewis Clark County Sheriff Leo Dutton. Well, okay, all right. You're not out shooting targets in the woods. You're out shooting targets in a field. I've shot at targets before. I didn't put an orange. I mean, it, it's... But, uh, no, the thing that's got me me messed up is it's the Bureau of Land Management. Yeah, It's oh, not like he's in privately owned woods. Yeah, no, it's public. He's It's, it's a public, public area. Land. Yeah, you... so like literally anybody could be there. And also, even more so, just don't shoot at people looking things. Yeah, yeah. I want to say that's a really good rule of thumb. Just don't shoot at people but looking like, things. But, like, I don't know. I, I've never looked this up because I've never had to look up the Bureau of Land Management. But uh, I'm pretty sure you can't hunt on federal land. Uh, unless it's, like, explicitly allowed. 
You know that that's that's an area in which I'm woefully uh, uh, lacking information, so I can't I can't comment on whether you can okay. or can't hunt there. You can hunt on public land. Okay. You can, but I'm not mm. even sure. Well, here's the big problem: there's no hunting license for big. That's true. Well, I believe in Washington, um, Bigfoot is a, an endangered a protected species. species. Yeah, yeah, and they. Which, by the way, I, uh, I would like to point this out. There are a lot of uh, uh, cryptids, folklore, and mythical creatures that are endangered species, not because the government thinks they're real, but because the uh, government doesn't want people out there shooting things that may be other creatures that are endangered species in the area. Yeah, I just look, pulled up a Natural Geographic article about it. Yeah, You can't kill Bigfoot in Washington. So not only is he breaking the law in shooting at a human being, Yeah, but in saying that he was hunting Bigfoot, he's he is explicitly breaking the law. Yeah, yeah. Explicitly breaking the law. Um, and, like, 100% of the reason why, like you just said, usually things like that are on books as endangered and stuff like that, is so events like this literally don't happen. Yeah. The shooter said, I was out hunting Bigfoot. Thought he was Bigfoot, and he said, no, he wasn't Bigfoot. And then the guy said, you should be wearing orange. It seemed like a non-emotional approach to something that's extremely serious, said Sheriff Dutton. The Helena man, it might be Helena, I'm not sure. It's uh, Look it, up the spelling. I'm going to say it keeps saying Helena, Helena. It's. I think it might be Helena. Okay. There's a. Uh, there's a Foster the People song called Helena B. Gotcha. So, the Helena I, man. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll move forward saying it that way then. The Helena man described the vehicle as a black Ford F-150, but did not provide further information, such as a license plate number or description of the alleged shooter. He asked that the area be checked for the shooter, and if found, that he be instructed on safe shooting practices, and that he does not wish to pursue charges. So he shot at literally the best guy ever. Yeah, like, yeah, he could have been in a lot more trouble if he literally shot at anyone else. Yeah, like, I would have been... Listen, guys, if you shoot at me, I'm gonna get so mad. I like... will be extremely <laughs> mad if you shoot at me. Yeah, yeah. I will press charge. I'll be, like, so mad. I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to press charges on the guy that's trying to kill me. Like, this. <laughs> oh, oh, a bullet landed 20 feet away from me? Three yeah, feet. Yeah, I'm pressing charges. Three feet. No, no, no. 20 feet away from me. I'm pressing charges. Yeah. Three feet. I want you to be in jail forever. Well, to be fair, if a bullet lands least... within 20 feet of any of us, we live in an, er an area where the houses are so close together where you're not allowed to fire a gun anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. You, I, I already want you to the press. I already want to press charges on you because you know what? You know what? You break a window. You know how expensive a window is to replace, right? Especially like, a good window. Them insulation I don't even, breaks. Exactly. I don't even care about yeah. me. I don't want to pay to replace my freaking windows. For the listeners, I do want to point out for the last uh, few weeks. Uh, John has been complaining about wanting to replace his windows. I am very serious about this. I need to replace these windows, okay? I've been looking into how much it's going to cost me. It's going to cost me a lot, okay? <laughs> I don't feel like paying that. But I also don't feel like having, uh, like, like my problem is my house gets so cold because my windows are old. <laughs> So if anyone wants to know what it uh, feels like to play Betrayal Legacy for the last two times with John, it's, preceded, it's preceded by Windows. <laughs> uh, Sheriff Dutton emphasized that the allegations are serious despite the desire not to pursue charges and that the shooter's actions could warrant a charge of attempted negligent homicide. Yes. I'm siding with the sheriff on this they one. They should. It doesn't matter if he doesn't want to press charges. Yes. <laughs> Deputies that who man... searched the area could reportedly find no vehicle uh, matching the description. But yeah, no, I'm with the sheriff on this one. That man does not deserve to have a gun. No. I'm sorry. I am totally sorry. I, that dude does not deserve to have a gun. Yeah, shoot at a guy once, you lose your, you lose your gun privileges. Yeah. Shoot at him 
multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. The, it wasn't uh, even like he shot at him once. Yeah. He shot it, at him twice and then proceeded to continue to shoot at him. Yeah. So if you shoot at Bigfoot, one, don't. But if you do, and then Bigfoot runs for a cover and yells, I'm not Bigfoot. Uh, stop. Stop. Yeah, stop, stop shooting. <laughs> stop shooting. <laughs> Oh man, ah, oh, jeez, Louise. Oh. man, what's the deal? You had, you were on, actually, um, you were very on, uh, on brand the entire episode. It was all about hunters being dumb. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying episode. to be more consistent. I'm trying to be more more consistent throughout the. Uh, if I do multiple creatures, time all together. Um, try Fair to tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I think we're releasing this on New Year's Eve. Are we? Yes. Yeah, so, um, let's see. We've got. Yeah, New Year's Eve. Oh yeah. So, so t- tomorrow is the and then the third. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that! You're getting the Christmas. I'm getting the New Year's Eve. You are. Yeah. This is a somehow even more thematic. Not really. <laughs> than the, the Christmas episode. Well, people be shooting them guns up in the air. One, don't, just don't. Don't. But people don't. be doing that on New Year's Eve. Um, if you're listening to this on New Year's Eve, few tips. One, if you get drunk, don't, don't drive. Don't go in the woods. Oh yeah, don't drive. Yeah, don't and drive. then <laughs> and don't then don't drive. go hunting. Don't go in the woods. Uh, and that's actually really serious. Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a really high incidence rate of deaths on New Year's New Year's Eve and New Year's Day because of people driving drunk. Um, call a cab, call an Uber, a Lyft, whatever. I'm sure there's someone who's offering free rides to drunk people at your local bar. Just take it. Um, oh, yeah. Because... I see on um, social media, yeah. uh, I, at least in the people who uh, I'm friends with, I, I'll see not infrequently around holidays people offering to give people free rides. Um, yeah. Just they're posting it on like their Facebook or their Instagram saying, hey, if you need a ride, give me a call. Yeah, just, just remember that because uh, drunk driving can be devastating. And it can really it can ruin lives, not just yours. So, uh, and frequently, uh, if you drive drunk, you're not the one who ends up dying in the event of a fatal accident. Oh yeah, which so. is true. Which oh okay. So there's a thing that that um, uh, in World War Two, I won't say other wars, but but so to get injured and to get out of service, um. There's a there's a specific instance I'm trying to remember, but essentially people would drink a lot and then drive a motorcycle into a tree because then you'd be too injured to to perform any tasks. But because you were drunk when you hit the tree, um, you, you're you're loosey goosey man, you're loosey goosey, and you you'd uh, you'd survive. Yeah, yeah. So just don't. Yeah. Um. Don't. Yeah. The more you know. <laughs> but I'm sure you've probably heard this before. But um. Anyhow. So, uh, I guess that's it for this week's episode of Cryptopedia. Um, as always, uh, all of our information that we're about to say can be found on our website, uh, cryptopediacast.com, which I probably need to do some updating on and upkeep, but whatever. Um, what was that? I heard you typing. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. I'm a little worried. Our Instagram is at cryptopediacast. Our Twitter is... At Cryptopedia Cast. If you want to email us, email us at uh, cryptopediacast at gmail.com or us at cryptopediacast.com. As always, we have our uh, our Patreon, which we are now getting actual supporters on. Um, Woo! Last, yeah. Uh, two weeks ago, we thanked our first uh, Jackalope, who we mentioned at the top of the episode, which is Clay Sinclair. So thanks again for the donation. Uh, Play, gotta... if you could please change your opinion on Dinobot over to Rhinox. I know it's hard, but really being on what some would say the right side of history is really more important. I think Clay's more right than you, but we'll go on. We'll move on. Oh. This. Uh, we actually have some more people. We actually had someone join the Facebook group, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yo, diggity. But we're not posting anything in that. This, I'm but, gonna try to start posting more. It's just hard to try yeah. to figure out. It, it's what it's to hard to juggle. Where. It's h- hard to juggle things. Um, 
generally speaking, I post to the page for Cryptopedia. Like I post episode updates and I'll post videos and stuff to that for that. But I don't yeah. post to the group directly, but the group is linked to the page. So, um, as always, rate, review, subscribe, all those good things. We, Share with your at, friends. Annoy your yeah. coworkers. Yeah, word of mouth is important. Um, I think we're actually at like around forty subscribers now. Oh. Um, because I I I check us on all the apps and I check to see if there's any comments or anything like that. So, basically, if you have feedback for us send it to us because i am trying to keep an eye on feedback uh but i did do a recent count of all of the like subscriber totals that the individual apps give and based on some back of the envelope calculations we're roughly at uh 40 so nerd and because okay yeah thanks <laughs> <laughs> um you can also send us monster requests and stories uh one of these days, we'd like to do listener-submitted stuff, but right now, we just don't have listener submissions to support that. Um, creepypasta, encrypted pasta, I'd be more than happy to get some of that so I can record some additional Creepypedias. Yeah. Um, oh, and, and uh, 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 other Patreon stuff. We also have Patreon-only um, uh, episodes and stuff. I think you did The Ballad of Shank Daddy X. Yep. A, uh, I guess... A creepypasta written by so uh, is it it's I call it more of like a monster adjacent pasta. It's a monster adjacent pasta. I have a yeah. fantastic relationship advice show <laughs> called um, Lover's which Lane. We should have posted the second episode of that on Christmas. Oh yeah. As a little thank you. Yeah. I might um, uh I might just put like the intro to it at the end of this episode even just so people uh, Yeah, no, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah um but yeah uh and i think we're still looking for commercial ideas maybe I don't oh know. yeah daddy's uh, running out of ideas yeah i got i got a, i actually have one but i'm Do gonna you. probably just record it and send it to you sight unseen and not explain it at all that's um, fantastic but uh yeah so that's that's uh that's it for all the, the housekeeping for the podcast itself so what about you brandon what do you got going on you can follow me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon, that is B-R-A-N-D-O-N, at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon, capital C, capital B. All right. Uh, on Instagram, I'm at mu2057. Uh, uh, most recent thing I've posted probably is something of a transformer. Because <laughs> that's what I'm doing now. Uh... <laughs> On Twitter, I'm at JF Dunham. You can see me ranting and raving about the current thing I'm researching on without giving away what it is. Uh, man, next week's episode has got me you really bent flustered. out of shape. You've flustered. You're shook. I've been getting messages throughout the week of you just saying, this guy's making me so angry. I hate I, these sources. <laughs> I can't. I cannot wait to get this out of my head. But, um... Anyways, if you want to get in contact with me directly, you can always DM me on Twitter or Instagram or email me, john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art is done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. I'm John Dunham. I'm Brandon Boyer. And as always, things are going to get weird. Welcome to Lover's Lane, the Cryptopedia premium podcast, where I browse relationship advice forums and try to help out some star-crossed lovers. I'm Brandon Boyer. Today we have Almar. He is 25, and he and his girlfriend have hit a snag. Let's see what's going on.